welcome back to The Pulse. I'm Araba Kumsen. Before we delve into those very juicy stories, my colleague Benis Abubedu is here with what's been making the news today. Hi, Benis. Hi, Araba. It's great to be here with you. And uh, in the news roundup today, officials at the Ghana Health Service say they're extending their surveillance nationwide after detecting H1N1 strain, also known as swine flu, as the cause of deaths at the Kumasi Academy. Is that the virus normally spreads when you are close to somebody. So if you are more than one meter apart, the chance of you getting the infection is minimal because the, the, the virus resides in the throat of the individual. So as a cough or sneeze or yawn, like you, the way we are close, if I have the disease or I have the virus, I can send it to you. But if you are further away, then there's no need of um, concern. So let's be make sure that we are maintaining a wider distance. Let's also be make sure that we have the good etiquette, like your cough etiquette. You know, when you're coughing or sneezing, your mouth and your nose must be covered. Then you're not transporting or transmitting the, the virus to each other. So uh, are you extending the surveillance to a Sokremon municipality or the township, for instance? Our surveillance system is nationwide now. The idea is that we don't know how far the students went. But what we want to tell people is that when you are there and you have a fever, you have a sore throat or a cough, go to the nearest health facility. At that point, you'll be tested. We'll do a throat swab. Samples will be sent to Noguchi. And then if it's H1N1, you'll be treated. So for now, for this event, we are, we are going to kind of um, send an enhanced alert that everybody must keep watch looking for the H1N1. So when somebody counts, if a fever, headache, sore throat, or cough, look for it. Immediately, you need to make sure you alert our system. We'll take a sample, and then we'll send it to Noguchi, so that if the disease are going beyond our borders that we know now, then it will, it will get tailed. died so far from what has been detected as acute respiratory infection and out of some 19 samples tested at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, 12 of them tested positive for type A influenza H1N1 strain. There have been concerns that the condition may spread by the officer in charge of disease surveillance at the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Franklin Isedu Bekui, has assured the detection of the strain will help officials prevent further deaths. He's been speaking to a hemming terrier. Meanwhile, Health Minister Kwekwa Juman Menu says President Akufado was put at risk of contracting the swine flu after he attended an anniversary celebration at the Kumasi Academy last weekend. It's unclear if he was informed about the deaths. The president was seen shaking hands and interacting cheerfully with students and teachers. Influenza can be spread by bodily contact. Now away from that, it's a case of survival of the fittest at the Electricity Company of Ghana project office here in Accra, where hundreds of power consumers have gathered to have officials reset their prepaid cards to enable them purchase credit for their prepaid meters. In her mid-twenties collapsed today while foaming at the mouth as she stood for about four hours in the crowd trying to have her faulty electricity prepaid card fixed. It's been a chaotic scene since Sunday as hundreds of electricity consumers who've had problems using their prepaid cards besieged the offices of the company. Maxwell Agbaba has more. <laughs> Wow. 
I was behind him when I saw her going down slowly. I was talking she was about to pick something from the ground. But when I saw her, she, she had just collapsed and fell down. Mm. So I could see maybe because of the heat, that's why. That, that's why. Wow. The place where you were standing, was it really hot? Sure, very hot. Mm. There's, there's no space. We we're, were just pushing by the cloud. Yes, yes. Here for almost a week now. I've not had any light uh, uh, to sleep. Yeah, yeah, I put the electricity guys to please do something about it. Yeah, so cold. Well, this is the first step um, towards getting your card reset for you to be able to buy ECG prepaid credits um, onto your card. A lot of people are gathered in front of this structure waiting to um, drop their cards in their envelopes. A lot of them look frustrated. You can see it's not really a queue. Um, uh, uh, it's badly organized here. So it's more or less like the survival of the fittest here at this entrance. What? What's your name? I'm Isaac. How long have you been here? Uh, since... Uh, uh, morning. I mean, from 5.30, I've been here. Yeah. How bad is the situation here? What are you waiting for right yeah, now? Very, 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 very bad. Yeah. I mean, there's no plan. There's no plan. We came here, I mean, you have to drop your envelope there. I mean, look at, look at the card here. Just to drop your envelope, your card, before for the upgrade. Look at the card here. How can you drop it? I'm a tailor. I'm a centrist. Okay. So right now, you don't have power. How is it affecting your business? I mean, there, there are more things there to sew. You see, and there's no power. There are more things that are coming to. So if there's no lights, I can't sew. This overhead, a man talking about illegal connection. He says uh, that is the only uh, thing they can resort to right now. Let me find out from you. Uh, what's the way Illegal, my area did that. Well, he said he, 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 he has finished with a legal connection. But you know that's bad, right? It is bad already. But it is bad. What I did also is bad. All of a sudden, you cannot buy, you cannot purchase the power. You understand? So what I would do to get a light for my babies to enjoy electricity and get have enough sleeping. That's what I'm going to do. Your business is not going in at all. Everything is slow because I, without electricity, I cannot work. You understand? I need electricity to 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 to, to move on my my my, my, my machines. You understand? Uh, since uh, uh, four, five o'clock, I've been here since from five o'clock. And one thing is worrying that since from five o'clock, since from Sunday, no light. So how can I work? And how can I live in the house? So if from here, I have the money to buy the credit. As I'm not getting from me, I'm going to do a legal. Of course. And no one can touch me. And I'll, I'll put a, a canvas beside me. And if the trees in my will come to, to come and be, I'll eat that knife mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, I see um, a police officer and then um, somebody from the, uh, uh, um, the army also trying to maintain all that there. But it looks like that is not working. Max Alakbagba with that report. Now, a 10-year-old boy is battling for his life after his penis and testicles were chopped off by a man in Nalerugu in the East Mampusi district of the northern region. Wachibu Adam has already undergone two surgeries in a bit to save his life. The family of the boy said the victim and his friend were on their way to school when the suspect, 19-year-old Abdul Rauf, allegedly called them to help him carry some firewood he had cut in a nearby bush, but the boys refused. According to them, Abdul Rauf then pounced on the victim, dragging him into the bush before chopping off his penis and testicles. Away from that, the Works and Housing Ministry has promised to deal with those using armed military men to evict senior public servants from state bungalows located behind the Electoral Commission. Earlier this week, a combined team of military and police personnel, led by one Grace Champong, who works in the office of the Chief of Staff, attacked the residents and threw their belongings out. Yes, Deputy Works and Housing Minister Fida Prempe. We also heard about it. I've asked my PR department to call for the tape. We are going to study the tape and investigate. Um, I've seen some faces in the video, and um, they've told me that there's a lady called Araba who is involved, and she happens to work at the Flagstaff House. My point is, if you work in the Flagstaff House, that's the more reason why you have to, you have to protect the image of the Flagstaff House. You don't bring the Flagstaff House into disrepute. No, you don't do that. And you cannot take the law into your own hands. And as much as I know, I don't think this ministry has allocated that particular um, uh, bungalow or block of flats to anybody called Araba. That's why I said we'd have to investigate. I sent for her from the Flagstaff House. 
She's not turned up yet. She only sent me a text message that somebody told her that I needed to see her. But we are still going to pursue this particular issue because we're not sent back for any individual to bring the name or the image of this ministry down. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, but, we're not counting us on that. Do you have a sense of the status of that facility that is in terms of the person occupying, is it a person who is occupying legitimately? No, but we can't, I can't tell you off head that we know each one who lives in any of our bandits. But the case in point, the individual said you were... No, no, I, 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 I just, just somebody just sent me a copy of the tape. I didn't even, I didn't listen to Joy News at the time. My colleague MPs called me, friends from outside called me because my name was mentioned in the tip. That's why I said I've asked my PR department to go for the tip. We'll have to watch the whole video clip. What I've been watching is the interview that the, your, your lady did with the gentleman. And it's true that some people have come through to my office to explain. When we started this exercise, people, came through to the office to explain why they were not paying um, monthly, whatever. Some said they were now regularizing things with the ministry and all that. Some said they were following up on their pay slips. There were so many excuses. And I can tell you that within a week, we were able to raise about 850,000 Ghana cities because people went to Bank of Ghana to pay. So it's a good exercise. Some other people like what the gentleman was saying, came here to explain to me that I work with so so and so agency A or agency B, this is my pay slip. There are some people who also came in with fake pay slips. So we are investigating all that. So if you come just walk into my office and tell me that I work with agency A, this is my pay slip, and so therefore I have the legitimacy to be in that bungalow, we'll pursue it. You see, some of these things have gone on for far too long. And they think that as a minister or a deputy minister, um, one of our core mandates is to ensure that we provide quality, affordable houses for the good people of Ghana. It's our other mandate is to ensure that we protect lives and properties at the coastal areas, to ensure that we desalt our drains and cover them when necessary and all that. But National executives and members of the National Association of Domestic Bears and Matrons have disassociated themselves from the reported cases of pilfering and theft of food items in some schools by certain individuals. They say they are committed to ensuring the smooth running of the free senior high school program. This comes on the back of an alleged theft of food supplies by the matron at the Ghana Senior High School. President of the group, Margaret Asamoa, expressed her outfit's willingness to assist in all investigations into the unfortunate developments. NADBAM is getting increasingly worried over the incessant report of some members of our association involved in such a despicable, unprofessional act of having to divert or misuse food items supplied to their schools for the purpose of feeding students under the government free senior high school program. As an association, ladies and gentlemen, we are using this platform to disassociate and to condemn this and other related more practices that are being reported to have hit our schools in recent times. NADBAN, in fact, is not in any position to defend, protect, or shield any member who is involved or who wishes to get involved in this shameful act. The association would therefore wish to assure the government of Ghana, management of Ghana Education Service, and the good people of our country of our resolve to remain committed to the successful implementation of the free senior high school program. The association wishes to indicate in clear and unambiguous terms that the association is made up of principled and honest persons who will do in its power to assist in all investigations into the unfortunate development so as to bring sanity into the system. 
Now, a Cape Coast High Court has reversed a decision by the University of Cape Coast to rusticate 22 students for their involvement in a chaos that broke out on campus a couple of months ago. The university was not able to provide evidence for the involvement of the 22 in the chaos. This led to the rubbishing of their case in court. In his judgment, the trial judge, Justice William Wampong, said failure to provide transcripts of the university's disciplinary committee meetings by the counsel for the defendant constituted a breach of natural justice. According to the judge, the posturing by the university meant that the students were not given fair hearing. Now, a former commissioner of the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, Justice Emil Schott, has called for sanctions to be imposed on various state agencies that have failed to implement the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan, NACAP. This follows the release of an, ass an assessment of the implementation of the plan for 2016 that indicates that many of such agencies are not implementing the plan. Government, Shraj, and other civil society organizations have been discussing progress of the plan since Monday. Presenting the progress report for 2016, Director of Anti-Corruption at Shraj, Charles Ayamdo, said only four out of 216 MNDAs reported back to Shraj on their implementation. Challenges, and you are by now clear that the low response by IPs Look at the effort that Sraj and the Monicom did in 2016, yet we have a low response. We will find the reasons over here. And when you total the number of IPs that we tried to reach out to, there were more than 340, just not adding the, the MMDAs and so on. And out of this, only four MMDAs in Accra participated. In fact, uh, three in Accra and one in um, uh, um, Iburi area participated, implemented NACAP and reported on what they have done in their assemblies, the rest. And then we also have representatives on the high leg. There are two problems there. Some change the representatives very often. So one comes for one meeting the next, the next meeting, another comes. And then the one who comes for the next meeting does not, is not aware of what we had discussed earlier. And when they go back, without whether they report appropriately, because the High Lake has two main functions, to provide strategic directions to the implementing partners on the implementation of NACAP. So it is at that level we take those decisions. And we expect that those decisions must go from that head to the unit. So if the private sector, um, the public sector, I mean, Public Services Commission takes, we take an, uh, a decision. It must go to all public sector institutions. Likewise, the head of Office of the Civil Service must go to the Civil Service. Ghana Health Service is must go to the component units. That is the idea of the high leg. But uh, I hope that we will get there. So, but that is a challenge that we would like to work up to. Our former trash boss, Justice Emil Short, believes punishing such agencies is the best approach to ensuring the targets set out in the uh, anti-corruption plan are achieved. As I said earlier, there is a need for government to impose sanctions on those who are not cooperating, the MDAs and MMDAs who are not cooperating, you know. Um, the participation is too low, and um, unless sanctions are imposed, I doubt very much whether it will increase, you know. And I don't think Ghanaians have taken the fight against corruption that seriously. And so, why do you say so? And so, well, because of the, well, firstly, the low participation of the stakeholders, the MDAs and MMDAs, but also because most Ghanaians are not prepared to report acts of corruption, and many of them actually glorify people who have been indulged in corruption and are flaunting their, their, their um, illegal wealth. 
And um, most, a lot of Ghanaians have not really appreciated the impact of corruption on their own lives, on national development. That is why recently when we had this um, pop-up maiden ev uh, event uh, by Joy FM on, Co on Corruption Watch, we demonstrated how much 350 million worth of drug that was destroyed in the in the uh, arson of the central medical stores, what that amount of money could have achieved, 80 kilometers of roads, um, the classroom bo blocks that have, could have been built, um, the boreholes, the number of boreholes that have been, could have been, you know, constructed. So it is important for Ghanaians to appreciate the huge impact that corruption has on the lives, on our, on, our, on our individual lives, on the standard of living of individuals, because few people who indulge in corruption are benefiting to the detriment of the majority of Ghanaians. People haven't really come to the point where they, on, they appreciate the depth and magnitude of corruption and the need for them to be part of the problem, to part of the solution. So those are today's headlines in our news round. I'll back to you, Araba. All right, thank you very much, Ben. Pleasure, but, uh, good to be here. Oh, yes, it's good <laughs> to see you. <laughs> Someone would say too fairly. Yeah, I but know. But you know, right. the Kumaka story has been a major talking point this week, uh, right from Monday through to today. Uh, what are officials telling us about what to look out for, the symptoms? Great. So, Araba, they're saying if you're reporting of high fever, if you have a sore throat, if you have uh, some serious headache, because they're extending their surveillance now uh, to the national level, once you report uh, you know, any of these symptoms, you should visit the nearest hospital because you can't tell really, because I just came from Kumasi not too long ago. <laughs> so you don't know who I met and who that other person met. And so we all need to be careful. Mm, all right, exactly. and indeed we have to be careful. But we're taking a short break. This is The Pulse, don't go away. We have a lot more for you when we return.